Right. Well, because to me, this is, apart from the e person who emailed us in, this is really, and I put it at the top of my list, because it's something that bothered me when I was growing up, that I, I thought, how could we have evolved? Because the eye is so complex. For example, we've got cameras in the studio here, and they need camera operators to, to pull focus and to be able to change shots and everything. And, and the more distance or close-up you get, you have to change uh, the, the actual iris of the, of the camera perhaps even open it or close it a little bit. So the, that's all done instantaneously within, from the, within the brain, the human brain. And it's so complex that I thought, yeah, how could we have been bumping around without sight for thousands or millions of years if we've evolved, when really it needed to be functioning from the word go? Well, yes, all right, I'll, I'll, I will answer that, that question. Um, certainly, you're absolutely right. The eye is a most remarkable organ, and it does the same sorts of things that these television cameras do. It does um, instant focusing. It does instant stopping down with the iris diaphragm. It's, it's got um, full color, three, three color vision, just like modern televisions uh, have. Um, and it is a remarkably beautiful, it's not totally flawless. There are interesting flaws, interesting imperfections, which actually are revealing. Nevertheless, it does work very well, and an engineer would um, give it somewhat high marks for being well, quote, designed. Now, you raise the question, doesn't it all have to be working before, it'll work, before it'll, it's any, any good? How could we bump along for millions of years with only half an eye? That's a bit of a fallacy, because actually um, only a quarter of an eye, only a hundredth of an eye, is better than nothing. You can make a, s a slowly climbing ramp of improvement from just the very rudiments of vision, just say being able to tell the difference between light and shade, nothing more than that, right up to the perfection of a human eye or the eye of a hawk, say. And in order for evolution to explain that, all, all we need is that there should be a, a ramp of improvement where every step, a hundredth of an eye, two hundredths of an eye, three hundredths of an eye, etc. fifty percent of an eye, fifty-one percent of an eye. Each step has got to be an improvement on the one that went before. And it's easy to see why that would be. You start by being able to tell whether there's a shadow, whether it's night or day. Shadow's useful, that could be a predator moving overhead in the sea. Um, night or day is obviously useful for all sorts of purposes. Then you could imagine a cup um, instead of just having a flat sheet of light-sensitive cells, it just, the edges turn up into a cup. Now, the cup means that if there's light coming from that direction, it hits that part of the eye. If there's light coming from that direction, it hits that part of the eye. So already the animal can tell the direction from which light is coming and the direction from which a shadow is coming. So we, we haven't got an image yet. All we've got is the direction of light. Now the cup can steadily and slowly over evolutionary time close over until you end up with a little hole at the top. And the little hole at the top, the same principles working all the way, that light coming from that direction hits that part of the retina and from that direction hits this part of the retina. But because there's a hole, it's rather more precisely, not exactly focused, but um, light from there hits there, light from there hits there, light from there hits there because it's got to get through the hole. We're moving towards a pinhole camera. Now, a pinhole camera, if you make the hole small enough, and remember we're having a smooth gradient of closing up the hole. If you make the hole small enough, then it makes a sharp, focused image. The trouble with a pinhole camera is that the image is very dim because very little light can get through the pinhole. What you need is a lens. Um, because what a lens does is gather light from different directions and focus it on a point. Instead of ha it having to go right through the middle of the hole, it could be gathered from a wider range of sources. Now, um, a lens is not difficult to arrange. Any old chunk of, set of transparent gubbins will do the job better than a pinhole. So once again, we've got a slow, gradual improvement. Any old lump of gubbins, transparent, is better than nothing, and then the lens simply improves its shape gradually, 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 gradually. It's got to be gradually. Every step has got to be a slight improvement over the previous one. You get a lens. Um, Can I just ask you, though, Richard? Yes. 
how long did this process take? Well, that's very interesting. I mean, we, we've got um, hundreds of millions of years to play with because that's what geological time gives us. I mean, it, we've got maybe a billion years since the first eye, since the first focusing eye appeared. Um, what about the trilobite? Trilobites uh, uh, have very beautiful eyes. Um, and very, very clever. I mean, they're just, it's amazing. Uh, they, 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 ha they have compound eyes, which is what modern insects and crustaceans have. But the and trilobite has, um, in, the, in the fossil record, is exactly the same today as it was, or in that sense, it, it, it didn't evolve, it had, it, it well, had those lenses. Well, there are trilobites today. No, I mean, but um, it had the lens uh, mechanism, which is, is no, quite powerful. Trilobi well, tri trilobites have, co have compound eyes, which is a very different principle, and it's a very interesting principle. It's, it doesn't tr uh, focus quite as, um, as sharp an image as our eyes do, um, but it is a very beautiful thing, um, and trilobites do go back um, hundreds of millions of years, 500 million years, half a billion years. Um, it must have taken um, some time before trilobites came on the scene, but even trilobites are relatively recent compared to the age of the Earth which is four and a half billion years old. Um, oh, but obviously Remember when you ran away and I got on my knees and begged you not to leave because I go berserk? Well, you left me anyhow and then the days got worse and worse and now you see I've gone completely out of my mind. And they're coming to take me away, ha-ha, they're coming to take me away, ho-ho, hee-hee, ha-ha, to the funny farm where life is beautiful all the time and I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats and they're coming to take me away, ha-ha! You thought it was a joke and so you laughed, you laughed when I had said that losing you would make me...